Organ organized by Department of Biotechnology and IQAC. Firstly, I welcome our Chief Patron, Dr. Virendra Hegde and Patron Dr. Esho Verma for their encouragement. You just can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you, sir. Yes, sir, we can hear you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Firstly, I will welcome our Chief Patron, Dr. Virendra Hegde and Patron Dr. Esho Verma for their encouragement and wishes for today's webinar. I extend my warm welcome to our beloved principal, Professor Sainat Malige Madhu, for his constant support and guidance in organizing this event. I welcome you, sir. Now, I welcome Professor G.R. Sumitra, IQAC coordinator of our college, who is inspiration to conduct such type of activities. Now I welcome Professor Jia Sumitra, IQAC coordinator of our college, who is inspiration to conduct such type of activities in the college. I welcome you, ma'am. I welcome Dr. Bridges, head of the department, biotechnology, and convener of the today's webinar. I welcome you, sir. It's my pleasure to welcome our today's resource person, Dr. Harshraj, who has accepted our invitation in spite of his busy schedule to deliver session on the science behind the cancer into today's virtual session. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. I please to welcome all teaching and non-teaching staff and students for today's program. I welcome you all. On behalf of our management and college, I welcome all the participants who have joined us in today's international webinar. Once again, I welcome you all to the session. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, ma'am. And I also welcome you for today's program. Now, I request our beloved principal, Professor Sainat Malikamadu, to give a presidential address. Now, I request our beloved principal, Professor Sainath Malligamadu, to give the presidential address. I hand over to you, sir.
I kindly request Ms. Apurva, third BSc BTBM, to give a brief introduction of our today's research research resource person. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Welcome, welcome, Harsha, Dr. Harsha, Harshraj. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, welcome, and at the same time, thank you also because you have accepted our invitation. Dr. Bridgesh uh, made a uh, made an attempt to contact you, and you rightly agree to be part of our uh, academic program. Thank you for yes, giving sir. an opportunity for our students to listen to uh, you and your expertise, knowledge, as such. Here, uh, as a presidential address only, I am not waiting for other formalities because we are very busy with our NAC process. And uh, uh, at the same time, the same day, uh, the network problem also, network issue also here. I'm calling you from my mobile uh, since uh, my laptop is not working and the sound system is not working in that. So that is why I'm here. See, as an introduction to this one also, I'll just make a presentation, my presidential. Of course, uh, 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 BTBM department, all other departments, along with the, BT, uh, the biotechnology, Biochemistry and microbiology is doing extremely good. Uh, and uh, the situation is also made us to uh, think of more of life and other things because of Corona brought a new change in every mind, everybody's mindset. And in that, we are very much worried about our health. We are not uh, uh, just uh, uh, careless about our uh, health as such. But uh, since you are talking, you have come and you are with your expertise knowledge in uh, cancer studies. See, as far as cancer is concerned, uh, it is increasing in tendency. There, there were an estimated uh, 18 million cancer cases around uh, the world in uh, 2018. Of these, 9.5 uh, million cases were in uh, men and 8.5 million uh, in uh, women. So in that way, Men and women, almost in this regard also, they are competing each other. And uh, uh, it has been estimated uh, new cases will increase by 2021. We, when we close this 2021, the uh, estimated uh, increase in the case around 2, 2 million, another 2 million will uh, change. So cancer, in the way, if you say cancer is not a disease. Uh, not one disease, but it is it is a mixture of many other things. It is not only one part. So having these all things, you will be uh, explaining later. So when we take such types of things, we have to understand why this uh, disease is coming. Now everybody is cautious. Now hand every now and then we are washing, and every now and then we are sanitizing. And we are choosy also, food wise also very choosy. <coughs> Only hot or warm food we prefer because cold things will, may carry some virus and other things. Just like that, food also, food also, variety of food according to the topology of the country or the habits, the uh, all type of food cannot be taken by an individual. It will have its own adverse effect. If I say my common sense may be right or wrong, you should correct me later. If my body is adjusted to one particular oil in the sense, that oil, oil only my body will adjust. If it is coconut oil, then coconut oil only I have to give it to my body. I cannot do all of a sudden change to sunflower or some other uh, things. Such times my body will react in a different way. And it will lead to some other complications in the, because uh, our cells are very, very minute, very uh, uh, micro uh, cells, uh, cells. It cannot adjust with that, and it will lead to the complications. Such complications may be, we are later, we are identifying it as uh, cases of different diseases, and ultimately some other way we say that that is cancer, that is corona, or some other thing. So that is why what we have to make is we have to change our lifestyle altogether. We should not go altogether. We should not change the lifestyle to new one. We have to maintain our own uh, lifestyle with a simple food, not excess or not very 
clumsy type of food uh, these days what we the young generation is liking for that so such a types of things will lead one or other complications in the body and it will take lead us to various types of complications so these things anyhow you are uh, you have uh, the department of biotechnology under the uh, leadership of uh, dr bridges and dr shweta are doing extremely good and my btb students also very very interested students and and we have invited other stream students also now because uh, cancer in a general way you are talking so that is why other students also there so awareness is very very much needed awareness is for anything awareness is required and awareness also should get it from the education the way in which you are giving or by themselves by common sense also they should make the logical deductions and other things that they have to do it so in this regard dr bridges has taken a very good step i congratulate him for the very nice initiative as such and uh, i hope uh, many more such initiatives will come from the from his department and uh, we will uh, succeed to give awareness education and everything to our girl students and uh, at the same time i congratulate and i thank you for accepting our invitation and i pray for your good health and your interaction even in future when you come down to the country you can come to the uh, institution and uh, interact with our students uh, our teachers and uh, other things so I, i welcome you on that way and i pray lord manjunath swami and pooja hegde ji to bless you and all others in a every uh, respect every endeavor so thank you and at the same time i am not going to listen to you because of my yeah. uh, engagement because fifth and sixth our nac process is going on college will be accredited by the uh, accredit accrediting agency that is a uh, national assessment and accreditation council bangalore they are visiting our college already we have submitted our ssr and uh, they are making so some preparations uh, required my uh, ppt presentations or even other arrangements and other things i will be having continuous meeting thank you thank you uh, bridges thank you uh, dr harsha raj Uh, thank you sir uh, thank you very much for the kind word yes, thank you for your kind words. so very all the best very all the best thank you for your kind words and thank you to all of the course who is supportive in all activities of the course once again thank you sir. thank you arshini thank you arshini thank you carry now okay i would like to call upon ms apurva of the psc meeting to give a brief introduction of our research person <coughs> Thank you, Harshini. Good morning, everyone. I am Apurva of Third Bitivium. Take this great opportunity to introduce our today's eminent resource person, Dr. Harsha Raj. Dr. Harsha Raj is currently working as postdoctoral fellow at Wiseman Institute of Israel, Science, Israel. His work is on the molecular cell biology of triple negative breast cancer on the following aspects: importance of selenoproteome in ceratosis. combination therapies for tnbc and brd4 as therapeutic target for tnbc to begin with his bachelor's degree sir pursued his bsc in cvz combination at urajas college university of mysore pursued his msc in biotechnology university of mysore manasa gangotri mysore and phd in biotechnology at university of mysore in 2018 having his thesis entitled targeting tumors for apoptosis using a combination of scfvs pie2 trial and anacardic acid which is a dbt indo german collaborative project under the supervision of professor bharati p salimat university of mysore india and professor dr joshin rosler university medical center for center freiburg germany as a collaborator Dr. Harsha Raj is CSIR UGC Net qualified, KCIT qualified, pre-university lectureship. You visited Pediatric Oncology Center of Pediatrics and Adolescent Medicine, Freiburg, Germany, as a part of PhD research program funded by DBT Indo-German Project. Sir has been awarded awarded Junior Research Fellowship DBT there by Government of India. 
also sir has attended many national and international conferences and workshop and also by the best poster award dr harsha raj has 10 international publications and many are under book review it is indeed our privilege to have dr harsha raj today with us as our resource person i welcome you once again sir thank you all thank you apurva thank you thank you ms harshini thank you ms apurva thank you dr shweta prasuna brijesh of course dr brijesh and uh, the principal all thank you for your kind words so shall we get on with the presentation yes sir thank you Can you see my screen? No, no sir, not yet. now can you see it yes sir okay all right am i audible Yes, sir. Okay. But your screen is not visible, sir. Sir, your screen is visible, but the presentation is not. No. Not it, sir. Now is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So finally, after all the lags, sorry for the delay, sorry for the connection issue. So I'll get started with the brief lecture on the science behind cancer. so i'll be just since there are uh, the audience is a mixture of uh, biology and also other students i will not go very much into the details and bore you guys so so today's topic is the science behind cancer or the biology behind cancer and the basics of tumor biology and how to diagnose cancer how to treat the cancer and how can you prevent yourself from getting cancer okay so 
can you see my pointer yes sir okay so the top picture which i am pointing at is a picture of breast cancer cells which are undergoing mitosis so these cells uh, are uh, image the image is taken from a scanning electron microscope the, the cells are growing on the petri dish and they are dividing so each cell is moving this cell is moving in this direction and the other cell is moving in the other direction and this picture uh, you can see a cancer cell going inside a hole so this is a picture of uh, a migrating cancer cell uh, or i hope you understand what is a metastasizing cancer cell these are very dangerous cancer cells which can move around inside your body but that is mimicked using a, a petri dish on on a petri dish this is a, a filter a hole with a single hole which you can see through a filter and below the filter you have some chemicals which are attracting the cancer cell okay so the cancer cell is moving towards the source of the chemical or the protein which is present in the media so this is exactly what happens inside our body as well and the bottom picture uh, which i am pointing at is a tumor growing a depiction of a tumor growing inside a human body and how it gets lots of uh, food to grow through the blood vessels from other nearby blood vessels okay so uh if you all know uh, why is cancer called uh, cancer i mean why was it called cancer why not by any other name any idea and uh, this also depends uh, this also is a constellation i hope you know what is a constellation so cancer is also a constellation so it was it all started with hippocrates who is called the father of medicine so it it was way way long before uh, christ so he was the one who coined the term cancer so it's a greek word called karkinos so he called it cancer because he saw the tumor uh, resembling uh, like a cancer which is shown here so he felt it looked like a cancer or maybe he meant uh, once it catch holds of you it won't let you go until you die so that probably that's the reason he called it cancer and since then it has been called cancer and there was somebody else in uh, who also called it onco or onco that is why we have oncology so according to his theory uh, which is not true anymore he he thought our body is composed of uh, four kinds of fluids one is blood uh, one is film or mucus and there is yellow bile and black bile so which is very similar to our ayurvedic system of uh, uh, pitta and uh, uh, i don't know what what is it called vata and pitta i guess so and he thought excess of black bile caused cancer so what, we all know sorry vata pitta kapha vata pitta kapha ah vata pitta kapha it's exactly the same thing taken from the greek mythology uh yeah so moving ahead so does anybody know which is the oldest known case of cancer that has been reported so you cannot it is not just cancer in humans but it there are proofs which say uh even dinosaurs had cancers which is around 76 million millions of years ago even before humans so they found this fossilized bone of the fibula or fibula sorry uh, the small bone in their hind leg so this is the dinosaur it is called centrosaurus it is a herbivorous uh, dinosaur and uh, the bone on the fibula had 
ossifications extra bone growth which is very very similar to the ossifications found in bone cancer of humans so they took this bone uh, they dig out the fossils from the uh, uh, an old lake in the salt bed of canada alberta and uh, when they took out the bone they made thin slices of the bone and observed it under the microscope which and they came to the conclusion that this was osteosarcoma which is very very similar to human osteosarcoma okay <coughs> and uh, which is the oldest document case of cancers in humans so if we talk about humans the first reported case was in egypt so even now there are they are finding many many mummies i hope you know what are mummies so uh, and they they uh, the doctors in the egyptian my uh, egyptian civilization almost 5000 years ago they have written uh, what they how they treated cancer of course they didn't call it cancer they called it by something some other name they didn't know this was cancer but they are, they have shown in their uh, uh, scripts that women had breast cancer almost 8 to 10 women had breast cancer and this is a doctor a uh, picture of a doctor or a surgeon on in the egyptian civilization and how they used to treat cancer so they found a, a growth of tissue growing on the breasts or the uh, uh, throat or any other kind of cancer when the lump was found what they did was they used a, a machine called fire drill this the picture of the fire drill is shown here so this is the bow connected to the drill so you just rotate it like shown in the depiction and the tip of the drill bit uh, the fire drill heats up it becomes red hot and that fire drill is used to burn the tumor the that procedure is called cauterization even doctors do cauterization to uh, fuse broken blood vessels uh, broken uh, tissue uh, after surgery so this was this is how uh, egyptians performed the surgery on uh, breast cancer and uh, this skull is the picture of a 16 year old uh, or 16 to 20 year old male who had leukemia uh, how did they find out it was leukemia because even now uh, people who have leukemia if the leukemic cancers uh, metastasize everywhere inside the body they uh, settle on the bone and start eating away the bone so the whole of the skull is spotted you can see that and uh, the other picture is the pelvic bone of a female around 30 years 30 or 40 years of age and again you see uh, there are pun puncta holes in the bone of the uh, hip bone this is metastasis of the breast cancer so experts have proved that uh, egyptians had cancer moving on sorry <clears throat> so many people came and went they had many different theories about cancer how they originate what happens in cancer and uh, many centuries passed like there were many many theories like the lymph theory once people started uh, dissecting uh, dead bodies that is when they learned about the nervous system the blood vasculature and along with the blood vasculature you also have another set of vasculature called the lymphatic system where a clear uh, uncolored solution of lymph flows through that uh, vasculature so they thought it is because of problems in the lymph uh, circulatory system you get cancer and uh, some even thought because of trauma if you are hit by somebody uh you may, you you will get cancer and all that and even people thought because of worm infestation or parasites you can get cancer and one other interesting thing is 
Johannes Fiber. This is a, a, Dutch, uh, a Danish physician and a professor who was uh, working on cancer. And in 1926, the only uh, Nobel Prize that was given wrongly, even now it is the only blunder co committed by the Nobel Committee, which is present in Sweden. Uh, he, he published a paper or he showed that in rats and humans, uh, uh, a nematode or a worm called Spiroptera carcinoma. He called it Spiroptera carcinoma uh, because he thought this worm, when goes when it goes inside your stomach or gut, it it forms cancers and nodules of uh, cancer, and it is responsible for uh, colon cancer. So. And everybody was impressed and they thought this was a very great discovery. So he was immediately awarded a Nobel Prize in 1926, but very quickly it was proven wrong by other uh, good scientists. And uh, it was shown that it was not because of the worm, but instead uh, because of a deficiency of vitamin A. So this is one of the black spots in the Nobel Committee. And like humans, do all animals get cancer? Have you ever thought of this? Of course, all almost all animals get cancer except a very few. Okay. So even starting from the lowest, the clams or cockles or the oysters, which you all know, uh, they have a certain kind of blood cancer in their blood where uh, inside the they are inside the ocean right and so if they have this if one of the one among the uh, population has this cancer uh, and if the blood is passed on to if it touches or if it goes into other clamps or other uh, members of the population so even they get the cancer so this is a contagious kind of cancer and very similar to that, you might have seen cancers in the dogs and uh, this animal is called the Tasmanian devil from Australia. It is similar to a dog, but, but looks like a big mouse. <clears throat> so they have this uh, contagious cancer because they've, they usually are in the wild and they fight for females. So when the males fight, they bite each other on their face. And through saliva, they can pass on contagious cancer. So this is seen even in dogs. And uh, yeah, contagious cancer is seen in, even in dogs, uh, mostly uh, by biting or by sexually transmitted uh, cancers. But wh wh what interesting uh, animals uh, other than these don't get cancer are these animals, these four animals. So a lot of research has been going on in these animals, especially the elephant, which is such a huge animal. So and elephants just don't get cancer. And uh, there is another animal which uh, lives very uh, deep inside the ground. These are called naked mole rats. They have no fur on their skin and they don't have any eyes at all. They can just cannot see. So they, their sense of smell is uh, extremely well developed. They move around uh, in the dark. They are always in the dark and they never have fur. And they are, they are extremely well adapted and uh, they, they, have, uh, they just don't get cancer. And other than that, there is a whale called bowhead whales, which uh, also lives up to around 200 years. And even they just don't get cancer. And even bats, bats were all famous for COVID right now. And uh, you might have thought even if they are uh, a thing for so many kinds of viruses, they don't even get cancer. They are very specialized. They are evolutionarily very well adapted. So when they checked what is, what is the difference between humans and these animals, they found different things like the 
clearance of cancer cells or uh, how how the genetic makeup of the uh, genome of the elephant or the genome of the mole rats or the genome of the whales are different from humans and based on this uh, we are trying to make uh, similar changes uh, using drugs so that even we can have such long life spans or we can prevent cancer looking at their genome okay now this is the latest uh, estimated age standardized uh, incidences of cancer worldwide in both sexes so as you can see the so called well developed nations are having lot of cancer especially australia anybody knows why australia has lot of cancer yeah. okay and of course india is it's not so Due drastically heavy sunlight ah very good ah uh, why do you get lot of sunlight there now Ge geographic arrangements in huts yeah the earth's axis as well there is one more important thing because above australia the ozone layer is depleted so there is no filtering of the sun's uv rays falling on australia so because of the damaged ozone layer uh, there is a lot of uv rays coming on top of australia and like you know uh, in australia the original people are black people they are dark colored what are they called the original race of australia are called what no idea they are called maybe negroes no they are not <laughs> you are not supposed to say that word anyway they are called pygmies so pygmies are the original inhabitants of australia they are very very similar to africans of course they originated in africa and moved to australia through the sea or the land route anyway but the later on people from england or the white so called white people they took their ships and went to australia and uh, they started living there and their population grew and uh, this is because they are whites they don't have melanin pigment so if you don't have melanin pigment what does it do if you have lots of sun so uh, melanin is present to prevent dna damage of your cells so around the nucleus uh, where your dna is present around the nucleus lots of melanin pigment is present which absorbs the uv light so if you don't have so much of melanin the uv can penetrate into the nucleus and damage the dna so as you all know these uh, caucasian people or the whites they love to go to the beach and uh, put on the uh, uh, bathing mask or the sun tan oil and they like to get a tan so they lie in the beach uh, in, in the open sun so that is the reason they have a lot of skin cancer or melanoma because they don't have melanin they have a lot of sunlight and the sunlight is strong uv rays which damages their dna okay similar is the case with america even even the original people here they are called indians not this indians of course they these are also called uh, american indians or indians they were the original population they uh, they have a darker color skin but again the whites populated america and even they started getting the same kind of cancer 
okay so if you look at the number of cancer deaths worldwide which is the major type of cancer so of course it is the lung cancer which is which they always takes the number one position but the other three or four cancers uh, every year it changes and uh, after lung you have the colorectal cancer and also your breast cancer coming up so it is always the lung cancer which takes up the highest number of cancer cases did you know when it when lung cancer started anybody what is the reason you have so much of lung cancer air pollution so when do you think air pollution started after industries got expanded maybe very nice very know. nice yeah after, exactly the after the industrial industrial revolution every all industry started they started giving out they started making factories lots of black smoke lots of vehicles started so pollution is growing uh, every time every day uh, in a increasing manner and along with that people have started smoking right so yeah and if we talk about cancer in children uh, the majority of the cancer in children is leukemia uh, leukemia is the cancer of the blood the major is leukemia and other is brain cancer so in children you don't see lung cancer much but blood cancer and brain cancer are the highest okay so now we'll come to the actual basics of characteristics of cancer cells so how does a what are the different characteristics of a cancer cell so as as you all know i'm sure it is one of the one one of the important property of a cancer cell is it can grow uncontrollably or it just doesn't die a single cell if it becomes cancerous it it will it will not die it will continue it will start growing continuously uh, for uh, infinity so this is called immortalization or neoplasia the correct term is neoplasia and the other characteristic is they can spread anywhere inside the body so once say if you have a cancer in the liver it originated in the liver cell one one cell in the liver get, got uh, cancer and after a few generations it can move to the lungs it can move up till to the brain it can move to your kidneys anywhere okay this property of the cancer cell is called metastasis and uh, another important uh, characteristics is they even though your body's immune system tries to kill it it will behave as though i am a very good person i don't want i am not causing any harm inside the body and it will trick the immune system saying that uh, i am a good person don't kill me so it will give out signals like this and uh, it will escape the immune system and it will escape also cell death so there are mechanisms inside the body which make a infected cell or a cancerous cell or any other uh, diseased cell to die and stop other cells from getting uh, disturbed from that cell so it is a process called apoptosis so even the cancer cell uh, stop apoptosis signals so so they originate and in one organ and they can reach different organs and start growing and in that organ so that is how you get multiple metastases and and you might have heard of patients who are in grade stage 4 cancer so stage 4 cancer it torge and theater so it means Uh, the primary tumor which originated somewhere in a different organ has moved on to all the other other organs and started forming cancer in that organ so the finally finally the patient will die of multiple organ failure all the organs will start failing okay so 
as you all know uh, this is a picture of a cell cycle right so there is g1 phase there is s phase or synthesis phase there is g2 phase and there is a small mitosis phase so a normal cell will regularly do all these phases at a time bound manner correctly but in a cancer cell everything is hey, it has gone crazy that cancer cell has gone crazy and it continuously uh, uh, skips one of the one of, one of the other steps and goes into mitosis so they continuously divide and uh, if i talk about cancers or tumors uh, there are two basic types so one is called the benign cancer the other one is called the malignant cancer so this is the picture of a benign cancer so these are normal cells around and there is this cancer growing inside a it is like a plastic bag it has a capsule around it so it doesn't reach other organs it simply starts growing uh, in at one place e gedde antarala that is the benign cancer but malignant cancer it doesn't have a covering or it doesn't have an outer boundary so they are the worst type of cancer you can get and uh, they can travel anywhere and they are very very hard to treat okay so how are cancers named is it solid and liquid tumors does anybody know what are solid and liquid tumors can you give me an example of liquid tumor leukemia exactly so leukemia is a example for liquid tumors they these cells are always flowing in the blood that is why they are called liquid tumors and majority of almost all of them are solid tumors which form tumors or big chunk of tissues which are cancerous okay so how are they named they are named based on where they originate right so one is called carcinoma carcinoma are the biggest class of cancer or the major type of cancer they arise from the epithelial cell uh, like any cell for that matter it might be your skin on your hand or the surface any surface the internal surface or the external surface it uh, so it can be epithelial cell on your skin epithelial cell in the lungs in the breast or in the colon anywhere in the body where there is epithelial lining if that those kind of cell get cancer they are called carcinoma so examples of these cancers are basal cell carcinoma melanoma like i said australians get a lot of this melanoma squamous cell carcinoma where the squamous epithelial cells which are secreting cells these if these get cancerous like in the breast these are called squamous cell carcinoma and there is also called merkel cell carcinoma which are initiated by merkel cell virus okay that is one of one one among the others and next comes the sarcomas you might have heard of sarco sarcomere sarcoplasm what does it say sarco is relating to muscles right yeah so if if the cancer originate inside the epithelial layer or sub layers uh, beyond the epithelium like the muscle the bones or the fats these type of cancers are called uh, sarcomas the examples are liposarcoma where lipo is lipid right lipo is uh, cancer of the fat cells and uh, gi tract cancers are also sarcomas there is bone cancer called osteosarcoma or, or evig sarcoma and uh, chondrosarcoma is the sarcoma of the cartilage and angiosarcoma is the sarcoma uh, cancer of blood vessels okay uh, or hemangiomas uh, so you might have seen 
your moms or dads having uh, these cherry like uh, uh, outgrowths on, on their skins on their necks very tiny uh, pink colored uh, outgrowths these are these are nothing but uh, hemangiomas they call they are all they are similar to uh, angiosarcoma but they are not cancerous okay and uh, next one is lymphomas so like the name says the cancer originating from the lymph system or the blood or the lymphatic systems uh, these originate in the lymph uh, lymph nodes like these you have lymph nodes in your tonsils the doctor checks your tonsils right if the lymph node is swollen or not so these are the nodes where the cancers are present and they can travel around in to any other lymph node and metastasize through lymph so these are basically uh, blood cells like the wbcs the cancerous cancers of wbcs and they can these can form liquid tumors and also form solid tumors okay and the next one is leukemias like you said blood cancers are called leukemia and uh, the they originate so where do you get your blood cells from where do they originate bone bone marrow bone marrow sir exactly inside the bone marrow so the non vegetarians who who are fond of eating non veg would know what is bone marrow so it is present inside all the bones so the one which you try to take out right so this 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 is the bone marrow itself yeah if the bone marrow itself gets cancerous so whatever cells are forming inside the bone marrow will also be cancerous so they come out of the bone marrow and travel through the blood right so this picture is showing the rbcs in between the green colored ones are the uh, wbcs which have become cancerous okay okay so now let's see what is the difference between a normal cell and a cancer cell right so i have taken example of a skin so the biology students would know the orange uh, thing uh, shown here is the basement membrane or the extracellular matrix made of collagen so it is like a chair where all the uh, stem cells or the basal cells of the skin sit on it so it is like a glue which holds the stem cells of the skin so these are all stem cells and above they start uh, their mitotic divisions one by one up going up to the upper surface so if you scratch this uh, top layer of your skin uh, you see a white powdery substance right these are nothing but dead skin cells uh, so you will be shedding millions and millions of uh, skin cell every hour right so what happens here is this, these are all normal cells right so the basal cell or the stem cell starts divide starts dividing to the upward position so they if, if it is a normal cell they roughly divide around 30 mitotic divisions on an average if you take any normal cell they can only divide for 30 divisions right after that they just die by apoptosis so their uh, uh, life span is over after 30 cycles uh okay so but like i said in a cancer this 30 cycles uh, limit is not there it can continuously grow so what happens if the stem cell and the basal cell gets cancerous if there is a mutation in the dna of this cell it, it the cancer will accumulate here and start piling up and you can you get a tumor growing here right so this is what happens in the skin so now let's see 
say uh, let's take the example of say you want you have somebody in your house who is showing signs of let i'll take an example of lung cancer because it is the most prevalent cancer let's take the example of a lung cancer how do you go about diagnosing uh, if the patient if the person is having exactly lung cancer or not so what is the first sign you see anybody hello stomach pain sir no uh, at least problem. at least this picture all of you should be laughing now breathing yes. problem cough coughing i am sure all of you are missing going to drc or other movie theaters now because of corona and every time you go to the movies you see this ad right mukesh so yes. this ad was for right no, not to smoke because you get cancer so even the cigarette packets have a statutory warning not to smoke because you'll get cancer poor guy anyway mukhe this is mukesh and this is the cold tar which they so, show after smoking so many cigarettes your lungs is filled with cold tar which is true actually so right now he has become a main material for poor guy but uh, now they say all these ads will be removed they will come up with new ads anyway so what is the first sign if a patient is having cancer so he is constantly coughing and at later stages you might see blood coming out when he coughs so but this can also be a sign of tuberculosis so how do you differentiate it so first thing is you go to a physician or a doctor and uh, they check you for signs of uh, tuberculosis rule out if you don't have tuberculosis then they will how do they do a test for tuberculosis so they make you cough inside a petri dish and uh, the petri dish is filled with uh, selective media which grows mycobacterium tuberculate right so if that doesn't grow uh, you don't have tb so the next question is whether if it is lung cancer so what do you do next they uh, take a x ray or a ct scan like this so this is a ct scan and this is an x ray so you can see uh, sections in a ct scan you can see multiple sections of the lungs and you can see you can uh, there is a uh, opacity here uh, usually opacity is seen in cancer uh, uh, so this is where the cancer might this might be a cancer uh, okay so how do you prove it is cancer or not so once you do the ct you know there is something but you still don't know if it is cancerous or not so next step what they do is something called as fine needle aspiration so it is a biopsy okay it is called a biopsy it is similar for all kinds of cancer now so they do a biopsy so they make you lie down like this and with the ct they exactly locate where the uh, mass of cells are or cancer is and they put in a needle through your ribs and pull out a, a chunk of the piece of the cancer or the tumor so this is called biopsy it is done by fine needle aspiration right so they take out the biopsy and uh, you get a small piece of tissue so that tissue goes to the pathology lab so all of, all of you might know might be knowing what's the pathology lab right there are pathologists who uh, make sections of these and put it on a slide and observe it under the microscope right i uh, have you guys done this i'm sure you would have done mitosis 
by eosin staining okay they have said but due to covid uh, they couldn't ah. come to the practical classes <laughs> okay mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, they have that mitosis experiment. Right. Um, uh, most so, of them, right. they have done final years. Yeah. yeah, the final years would know better. So in human tissues, we use a mixture of stain called H and E, that is hemoxylin and eosin staining. The zoology students would have done this for sure. So what they do is they take sections of this biopsy, put it on a slide, and stain it with hematoxylin and xylin. So what, what the pathologist observes under the microscope is, so you can even do a very simple experiment. You can take an earbud, uh, earbud, clean earbud, <laughs> okay, uh, and uh, dip it in a saline, and you can put it inside your mouth and scrape the buccal cavity, and put, it, put the cells on the cover slip, I mount it on a slide, stain it with eosin and hematoxylin, and you can see cells exactly like this. So these are your normal cells, normal epithelial cells. Can you see the nucleus? It is so small. But if it is cancerous, you, do you see the nucleus here? There is almost 20 times uh, increase in the size of the nucleus. Why do you think there is increase in the size of the nucleus of cancer cells? Due to change in DNA. Due to? Change in DNA. Ah, of course. So the cancer keeps on accumulating mutations. Even the uh, diploid number goes up in cancer and uh, what, what happens actually is hypertrophy of the nucleus. It is just like you, are, you go to the gym and lift weights and your muscle starts growing. So, but the cancer cell, they have to continuously divide, makes lots and lots of proteins continuously, never ending. So that is why there is a lot of transcription, lot of translation, everything is continuously going on. So there is a lot of pressure on the nucleus. So that is why the nucleus increases in size. So this is what pathologists look at every, in every cancer, in any kind of cancer, wheat, uh, uterine cancer, endometrial cancer, breast cancer, anything. They just take a biopsy like this, do a HND staining, put it under the microscope and look at the cells and they look for the nuclei. If the nuclei has grown big compared to the normal cell, it is for sure cancer. Okay, this is one of the important sign of cancer. And uh, this is a normal cell and how they arrange one next to the other, right? They, they are very close to each other. So this is called contact inhibition. So once, the, uh, once a normal cell touches another normal cell, a neighbor cell, it is a signal for them to stop dividing. So they form a sheet of uh, monolayer and they are happy they are happily growing uh, sharing all the food materials equally but in cancer everywhere everybody wants more food so they have competition and they don't like to stay together so they many so they are disorganized in arrangement and their nucleus is very big so you can see that under a microscope right and even the size so the shape and size of a, uh, like for example, if you see a, a liver cell, what is the shape of a liver cell? Anybody? So the liver cells are all hexagonal shape. Okay. So if the liver cell normal cell uh, normal liver cell looks hexagonal in shape but the cancerous liver cell would have lost its shape okay that is another sign and uh, again any normal features of the normal cells is lost 
okay that is how they grade the tumors looking at the arrangement the nucleus everything they consider all of these points to stage and grade the cancer okay so nowadays even in israel and europe uh, there is something called as e cigarettes coming up so uh, of course the cigarette industry the tobacco industry is a multi million dollar industry and nobody wants to lose business so if they stop growing tobacco they many many people will lose their jobs and the gdp of a country will come down so no matter what people don't stop smoking and uh, uh, tobacco companies have come up with a new alternative so called safe e cigarettes so in israel everybody is smoking e cigarettes now but it is still not proven it is safe so it is different from a normal cigarette so it is called vaping not smoking it is called vaping because you get the vapors which you smoke and it is so called uh, less carcinogenic uh, which is not yet proven so it this uh, in another year or two you will start seeing this in india too or probably you see it already i don't know okay so that uh now let's see how a cancer begins right so normal cells die when they get too old or damaged and uh, the new cells take their place right this is the normal way of a normal cell the old and damaged will die by apoptosis and the stem cells would make new cells which take their place but in cancer uh if there is a genetic mutation or gene changes or uh, due to some reason uh, this this will be interfered and the normal process will be stopped and you get cancer so this is the basic reason how it happens so the reasons might be anything so you might have uh, radiation so this is the dna inside the nucleus of a cell and uh, because of the high energy uh, radiation uh, the dna might be damaged and when the cell tries to repair it and it introduces some changes in the dna so this might be because of uh, radiation some chemicals or any other thing which i'll discuss later so if that happens in a particular region called proto oncogene uh it gets activated it, since it gets mutated it changes it becomes activated now so now it is called an oncogene so if an oncogene is activated it for sure turns into a cancer cell so what are the causes so this is shown here uh, tanning the white people like to get their skin tanned they like to get golden brown color they don't like to be white or pinkish so that is the reason they lie in the beaches and they try to get the tan so because of this since they don't have melanin to protect their dna of the cells the radiation will go into the dna break them and uh, it will trigger the oncogenes so similarly if you are exposed to a lot of x ray so that is the reason when you when you go to an x ray the technician will tell you to stand there and he will run out of the room right and you can see a red bulb which is growing growing outside right so no other people want to be exposed to x rays so even x rays continuous ex exposure to x rays will cause damage to dna so or any other uh, radiation so marie curie all of you know about marie curie right so she discovered radium she didn't know it would ca cause cancer so both her husband and her they died by cancer or they uh, a lot of exposure of uh, high intensity radiation of course i talked about uh, cigarette smoke because the nicotine and the tobacco in the uh, cigarette they form mutagenic chemicals which are inhaled into the lungs and the cells inside the lungs are exposed to this uh, chemicals which triggers changes in the dna or mutations in the dna 
okay not only that even your face packs for benzoyl peroxide if you have pimples if you keep on applying uh, benzoyl peroxide or other salicylic acid or which anything that uh, triggers growth of uh, uh, cosmetics which trigger growth of skin cells so it is a lot of pressure on the cells right so this might be a cause for having skin cancer and not only that if you eat a lot of uh, hot dogs of course we don't have hot dogs in india yet and uh, and you have barbecuing so you they have this barbecue where they uh, heat meat on the uh, charcoal and eat it right so they use preservatives which contain nitrates and uh, other preservatives which can cause uh, when you eat these it can cause uh, irritation to the esophageal cells or the stomach cells and they cause cancer due to changes in dna and likewise all of you might have no, uh, heard of helicobacter pylori so it is a bacteria which uh, resides in your stomach and it causes ulcers in your stomach so if you don't treat it and leave it as it is the ulcers will slowly turn cancerous so this will get uh, this is how you get uh, stomach cancer by helicobacter pylori and similarly many viruses like human papilloma virus especially in women hpv infections cause cervical cancer right so so let's see what is proto oncogene so proto oncogenes are nothing but, but genes present normally in every cell but they are they are there for maintaining the cell cycle they 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 are meant to hold the cancer but when there is damage to the dna these proto oncogenes become oncogene due to mutations okay there are many known oncogenes so mutations can be by different methods like translocation or transposition that means the gene can translocate one from one chromosome to the other chromosome or they can uh, uh, get attached at a different place or gene amplification so the mutated gene can get amplified that means it can get multiple copies if there is just one copy of that oncogene uh, there are chances of you multiplying that gene three or four times so you can imagine the amount of oncogenes you would pro be producing and point mutations uh, where where the single nucleotide is changed from a to g or g to c or something like that and you introduce a mutation so all this will trigger cancer right so once one cell in your body gets triggered like this due to the changes in the dna it becomes cancerous and and once it starts dividing continuously it keeps on accumulating multiple mutations so that it has to survive as a cancer cell so it continuously accumulates lots of mutations so one examples of transposition is called burkitt's lymphoma it is seen in children this is a, a kid having burkitt's lymphoma what happens in burkitt lymphoma is uh, this is chromosome 8 this is chromosome 14 so during division or randomly uh, you have uh, a gene called mic c mic it is a uh, gene responsible for cell cycle and other function so it is a proto oncogene right so uh, this mic gene it gets cut from the chromosome 8 and gets attached into chromosome 14 below another gene what is this other gene on chromosome 14 is a gene which is responsible for making antibodies right so you need antibodies every uh, all the time right you have to be your cells should be ready to in to any other attack so your cells have to be producing antibodies all the time so what happens is this is always active 
so when this oncogene comes next to it you get a fusion protein so since this is always active so mic is also triggered and will, the cells will continuously start producing and mic since it controls the cell cycle uh, since it is continuously produced uh, you get a tumor like this so of course uh, this is now treatable kind of cancer it's uh, but still you can there are many instances this is just one example there are many other uh, cancers which uh, happen by translocation like this so there is also uh, involvement of a virus called epstein barr virus which triggers uh, this uh, translocation by virus or if if the virus infects you there are chances of having uh, burkitt's lymphoma in children other than uh, epstein barr virus you all know hepatitis c hepatitis b uh, it infects the liver and it causes liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma and similar to that you have hpv or human papilloma virus especially in women it causes the cervical cancer the cancer of the cervix uh, and uh, there is also herpes virus herpes virus which is uh, one strain is one of other strains are uh, sexually transmitted these also cause different cancers so this was proto oncogenes so other than that you also have tumor suppressor genes in normal cells so these genes are meant to suppress cancer right so if there is a cancer there are genes to control the growth of cancer so when if this gene itel itself is mutated they will not function properly so you lose the ability of suppression of the cancer right so you have two copies from one from your father one from your mother right so if both the copies are fine you have uh, amazing tumor suppression even if you have tumors your body will contract the tumor and uh, kill it but due to a random incident one of the copy gets mutated due to maybe you are not careful you got exposed to some chemicals or other um, radiation say one copy of the gene is mutated even then uh, since one copy is normal you will you will not have cancer but in cases when both the copies are mutated you will definitely lose the ability to suppress tumors so this is how you get cancer and one example of uh, a tumor suppressor gene uh, is uh, we sh you should all be uh, uh, aware of is do you know who this is of course all of you should be knowing everybody is sleeping p53 gene no no who is the actress the in the picture too much of this gene angelina angelina jolie angelina right jolie. what cancer did she have breast cancer recently exactly so she she had a family history of her mother having she lost her mother due to breast cancer she her sister had breast cancer so what she did was at the age of 37 or 36 she went went in and uh, got her uh, genome uh, uh, study and she looked for whether uh, she had this mutations in her genome so they look for primarily two genes if if you want to check for breast cancer the tumor suppressor gene is called braca1 and braca2 so these two are dna repair genes if they are mutated you will your dna repair mechanism goes wrong right so when when she got herself checked so she found she had a mutation in braca1 and uh, the people the doctors said she has around 85% chances of having breast cancer just like her mother 
so she immediately went in for mastectomy so what is mastectomy is removal of breast so so they remove both the breasts with the underlying muscle and uh, of course she is rich she could afford uh, a plastic surgery done so she got breast implants and uh, that is how she is she is still fine okay so remember that braca1 and braca2 are examples of tumor suppressor genes so if they get mutated you will uh, most of the time you will get cancer breast cancer and one other example if you have heard i'm not sure if you have heard of this if you go to kashmir or ladakh any place else in the chilly months of uh, the year like in the winter when there is snowfall these people wear this sh- uh, their their clothes uh, they it's called pesha pesha wear or something i don't remember so uh, they have this uh, uh, cup which holds the charcoal with fire or uh, uh, just to give them heat in the winters so it is called a kangri or a kangri okay so they hold you, you can see this person holding it inside the uh, his uh, his side inside his clothes so they hold it with both the hands so that they are they uh, take out their hands from the sleeves and hold it hold the kangri inside on, on top of their stomach so uh, people even now do this if you go to see if you go to kashmir you can see this so people started developing a type of skin cancer which is a squamous cell carcinoma the picture is shown here so this is called kangri cancer uh, so what happens is because of the high heat uh, the body the, your legs your thighs your stomach uh, are all exposed to high heat which is a stressful condition for your epithelial cells so these cells because of the high exposure to heat uh, again it triggers the dna damage inside the dna and uh, the cell the stem cells of the skin try to cope up with by cope up the dna damage by repair repairing trying to repair and they introduce mutations and that's it that is how you end up with skin cancer similar to that if you come to the south where or uh, maharashtra or uh, kerala you have lots of incidences of something called as dhoti cancer or sari cancer right this is because women and uh, men who of course men now don't stop uh, very few wear dhotis but uh, sari cancer is still rampant because they wear the sari or whatever they tie around their uh, waist very tightly for over a long uh, year, years together like even so you see after 60 or 50 years the region where you tie your uh, sari uh, that region would become dark and uh, it uh, if you still try tightening t- tighter and tighter the cells are under uh, immense pressure and because of friction and everything again there is formation of skin cancer okay and uh, of course there is colon cancer uh, which is the second one next to lung cancer so they do an endoscopy to look at if there is a cancer growth inside your colon colon is nothing but your large intestine and this region especially the rectum and the upper part of the colon is the region where most of the colon cancers are found this is because nowadays all of us all of us have moved on from Uh, natural foods to refined food we eat a lot of sugar we eat a lot of finger chips we go to kfc we go we eat burgers we go to subway so that is not nice right so eating a lot of maida uh, lots of potatoes and fried food which are not rich in fiber uh, they will 
uh, hinder the movement of the uh, inside the colon and they stick uh, stick to the walls you have constipation and due to the continuous pressure uh, over the uh, long periods of uh, exposure to this kind of condition you get the cells are again triggered and you get cancer in the colon so what they do is they do an endoscopy and you can see a tumor growing here so once they find this tumor they again try to do a biopsy and look what is the stage of the tumor and if it is still a primary tumor they cut open remove this portion so remove this and join the remaining portion so this is one of the method of colon cancer development and uh, of course uh, nlcc or non small cell lung carcinoma okay so this is one of the major lung cancers so like i told you uh, inside the cancer inside the lungs the uh, there are something called as alveoli where the oxygen we breathe in are uh, exported to the rbcs so the alveoli are very elastic right so what happens when you smoke is so the chemicals or mutagens in the smoke reach the alveoli and due to the continuous exposure of the smoke uh, there is a, a point mutation usually happening in the in a gene called alpha 1 antitrypsin so it it is responsible for the maintenance of elastic property of the alveoli so when you breathe it should bulge up when you breathe out it should compress so this is continuously happening but if you start smoking the gene mutation causes it to become hard so that is why you see a condition called emphysema in the smokers so their alveoli have will slowly start becoming harder and harder and they cannot start taking deeper breaths so this starts like this and like i told you once a mutation starts and uh, once a cancer starts it keep it keeps on accumulating mutations so this starts like this in the alveoli and there is kras there is p53 all the other mutations starts accumulating and finally you get metastasize metastasizing very difficult to treat cancer which has gone to the last stage similarly in uh, the liver if you are uh, alcoholic if you drink a lot of alcohol every day uh, you get uh, liver cancer so liver cancer might be because of drinking cirrhosis uh, by hepatitis viral infection and if you are a bodybuilder if you are trying to take anabolic steroids even this will cause liver cancer and uh, aflatoxin aflatoxin are these uh, toxins uh, wherein you see this groundnuts when you eat groundnuts you get this fungal infected groundnuts once in a while have you i hope everybody would have tasted it right the one so, which the groundnut yeah kadlekai kahi kadlekai sigutala yeah that is the one with aflatoxin so if you keep on eating such uh, kadle kai you will uh, probably end up with liver cancer so aflatoxin is one of them and uh, this uh, picture of a glioblastoma glioblastoma is one type of brain cancer so it is called glioblastoma because the glial cell uh, if you remember your puc uh, sign biology uh, there is something called as a glial cell uh, so if these glial cells become cancerous you get glioblastoma similar to that you have neuroblastoma where the neuron cells get cancerous and uh, yeah there are many types of brain cancers and the last one is uterine cancer where the uterus of course almost many of your mothers would have undergone 
what is the operation done to uh, remove uterus nobody sexectomy <laughs> yeah it is called hysterectomy so what happens is in uh, older women so who have crossed 50 55 they there is something called as menopause i don't have to tell you this of course so you would all know this so when the menopause happens so it's a uh, it's a stage where you have you your ovary stopped secreting estrogen right so uh, your ovaries have uh, uh, lasted a lifetime and they have stopped producing estrogen and that is how your uh, menstruation stops and that is the reason uh, it is called uh, menopause it pauses right so but what happens in this uh, simultaneously is if you are eating lot of junk food and if you have put on a lot of weight uh, um, women in their middle ages when they uh, encounter uh, menopause they have a lot of fat reserves what is the property of fat reserves in your body is they can uh, initiate production of estrogen even though your ovaries have stopped producing estrogen your excess fat in your body will still be producing estrogen so but your body your uh, uterus doesn't know you, you your uterus you, your uterus thinks uh, estrogen has stopped so i can stop functioning but when there is a lot of fat in the other parts of your body which uh, triggers production of estrogen this is how you start getting cancer the excess of estrogen is a signal for the uh, uterine wall to uh, again start the menstruation so this is abnormal signaling and this is how uh, almost majority of the women see this uh, type of cancer happening in their later ages so what they do is they undergo a ct scan so just by looking at a ct uh, they can make out the thickness of the uh, uterine wall or the endometrium if it is too, too thick uh, it is a sign it might be cancer so like i said so once they see it on ct they next step is to take a biopsy so they they are made to take a biopsy they scrape they take a small scraped material from the uterine wall put it on a slide do hematoxin and eosin staining and look at the nucleus right like i said so if the nucleus is larger in size and the morphology of the cells have changed then for sure you have cancer so then what do you do is uh, depending on the level of uh the stage of the cancer uh, they either remove the uterus or they remove the uterus along with the ovaries so this is called hysterectomy so make sure all your mothers after menopause get themselves checked right i a, a simple ct scan would do it and if there is something you can go in for a biopsy and next uh, so now a cancer is formed right how do they spread to different organs so one step is called angiogenesis angiogenesis is formation of new blood vessels from the existing ones okay so this is a picture of a cancer so usually a cancer is very very small when the cancer reaches the size of a, a grape a drakshi drakshi hannu nashta dappa adaga so the cells in the center the core a coral era central era cells uh, since the cancer uh, continuously divides it becomes a ball of cell and the center of the cells will not get lot of food so they are devoid of food so how do cells get food inside the body it is through blood right but your cancer is growing somewhere and it has become the size of a grapefruit but now the cell, the cells in the core in the middle of the tumor are not getting food what happens then 
so then there is something called as hypoxia so if there is no blood supply there is something called as hypoxia hypoxia andre uh, hypoxia hypo is less oxygen oxy is oxia so when there is less oxygen there is a transfusion factor it will go and a trigger formation of another protein called vegf vascular endothelial growth factor so i uh, hif uh, hypoxia adaga uh, your uh, hif on alpha will trigger uh, the transcription of vegf gene this vegf will, will be transcribed made into protein and this will be secreted out of the cancer cells so this picture is showing vgf coming out of the cell so either then up a trigger and right so once it is coming out of cell uh, if there is a nearby blood vessel passing through it is a signal for the cells on the blood vessel to grow towards the tumor so this is how a tumor slowly gets lots of blood vessels to feed the cells growing in the center of the tumor so ultimately the tumor will get lot of blood supply from everywhere and it will start growing and growing and forming a huge mass, mass of tissue so but the problem is e process tumba vega agutte so it is a very quick process and that is why the blood this is a normal blood vessel the you can see the cell lining this is called the endothelial cells endo andre olagalva so endothelial cells are arranged properly these are normal endothelial cells but a newly formed blood vessels drop in to the cancer if you look at them tumba uh, hapazodagi they are arranged in a disorganized way and the blood vessel is completely leaky there are openings inside the blood vessel so the in urgent urgent al maadadange blood vessel okay so this is angiogenesis first step the next step is something called as epithelial to mesenchymal transition i will not go into the lots of details of this so just to let you know so what happens <clears throat> once you have this cancer and the blood vessels are feeding them and uh, due to the hypoxic condition there they express a program called emt and the e is for epithelial state so this is a epithelial state of cells where if you see look at your skin cells they are all close by arranged one next to the other without any gap they are sitting on a basement membrane properly but when the cells trigger emt they change their morphology and the uh, so this can be uh, epithelial state can be compared to sunny diol dancing and uh, mesenchymal state can be compared to hrithik roshan so it becomes very very flexible so they become spindle shaped and they lose their morphology they lose contact inhibition and they are separate they are free to move around so av el beker bagbodu bend agbodu el beker nugbodu they get this capability right so what happens next is so like like i said you have a blood vessel passing nearby and this is your primary tumor so e tumor alli ivella epithelial cells but you can see one cell which has started growing into the mesenchymal state so they can start moving so in the basement membrane na they at the tip of the cell they start secreting lot of uh, uh, enzymes which degrade the collagen so they degrade the collagen and slowly enter into the blood vessel like i told you the blood vessels are all leaky they can enter very easily inside a blood vessel and they can travel through the blood vessel and they can reach different organs say if this was a liver cancer they come through the blood go to the lung or go to the another part of the body right and there they settle down and again revert back now i told you about emt once they reach distant organs 
they again revert back to epithelial state they again become conidial from hrithik roshan right so this is called met the opposite of emt is met mesenchymal to epithelial transition so this process this is how you get metastasis and you get uh, uh, primary tumors going into other organs right so almost all the research are now trying to understand why so in case of breast cancer women who have mm -hmm. breast cancer their secondary metastatic sites are always lung or bone or brain only these three only these three sites in the initial phase but even if it is later on it will go to different organs so now the research uh, field is trying to find out why there is exactly movement from one uh, breast to bone breast to brain breast to lung what is that signals uh, these cells to reach these places exactly and we are trying to uh, inhibit this process if you if you can uh, stop emt if you can stop this moving and deposition of the cells to other organs you have conquered half of the cancer if it is at a primary tumor you can of course remove the tumor and throw it away but the problem is the major problem is because of metastasis right if you conquer metastasis you have win half the war so apart from that what is the difference in metabolism so in normal cell as you have all read uh, it is the normal metabolism so there is uh, the cells take up glucose from the exterior environment through the importer called glut so the glucose undergoes glycolysis produces pyruvate and this pyruvate enters the tca cycle in the mitochondria and there is oxidative phosphorylation so this is the regular process right in a normal cell it produces around 36 atp per glucose molecule but that is not the case with cancer cell they are they want instant energy they don't want to wait until it completes tca cycle because they want to divide rapidly do all the things very fast they stop the tca cycle okay so they take in glucose continuously perform glycolysis and the excess of lactic acid produced is thrown out of the cell through a channel uh, on the membrane okay so that is the reason uh, the the cells around the tumor cell there is a acidic environment because of the lactic acid accumulation around the cell so this condition where the cancerous cell is highly dependent on glucose they want a lot of glucose they consume a lot of glucose to produce atp so they just get 2 atp per glucose molecule but they have high turnover of glycolysis this is called warburg effect okay so remember this cancer cells use a lot of glucose okay i'll okay so now coming to the stages of cancer uh staging is based on there are different stages so as the picture shows uh stage 0 is in situ at the site of uh, formation of cancer next is stage 1 it is slightly spread stage 2 is advanced and 3 uh, is spread to other Uh, different sites of the same organ and stage 4 is highly metastasized so you can see this picture so uh, the one shown in green is the lymph node so next to the tumor there is also lymph nodes wherein there is micrometastasis and this also contributes to the metastasis to different organs so this is again the hnd staining of a breast cancer patient so this is grade 1 of breast cancer uh, if you take a cross section of the breast cancer these are the ducts where the milk is produced so these are all the squamous cells which secrete milk into this empty pipe like structures okay so this is non cancerous 
or grade one or uh, just started cancer and look at stage two the size of the lumens inside the inside these has reduced but the size of the nucleus has increased to the to double but if you see grade three you just cannot see the morphology you just cannot see the uh, uh, the pipe like structures or uh, uh, holes everything is a mess right so grade three so how do you detect tumor uh, so this is important for all of you guys so in case the, oh, i hope not uh, none of your family members get a cancer but if there are now our newer methods to detect cancer but in my source there is uh, uh, there are only two places where you can get a uh, pet ct the best is pet ct scan so i told you cancer cells use a lot of glucose right so based on that knowledge they devised a uh, machine it is called pet scan or pet ct scan that is positron emission tomography computerized tomography okay so they they make you eat or drink uh, uh, another uh, another form of glucose called uh, 18 fluoro fluoro deoxy glucose okay it's nothing but glucose with a uh, radio labeled fluoride molecule attached to it okay so you just Uh, drink it and sit for one hour, and then you you will be made to lie down on this machine and pass through this machine. So the machine will look at where the glucose is accumulating. So like I told you, the cancer cells use a lot of uh, uh, glucose. So within one hour, you can see the patient is having breast cancer here, right? But these are Uh, the brain of course why is why is the brain lighting up in so such a bright color is because brain is a highest consumer of uh, uh, glucose it use it it depends on glucose right so your brain is taking lots of glucose that is the reason you see a lot of uh, staining there and these are your kidneys where the uh, glucose is being filtered out and you can see the bladder being filled with the glucose okay so within one hour you can detect where the cancer is this is the best method to pinpoint to locate where the cancer is present inside the whole of the body okay ct scan is slightly uh, lesser technical if you can go for a pet ct scan it is better okay and nowadays you get liquid biopsy which is still in the early technology uh, market and it is a slightly expensive not everybody can afford it so what they do is they just take your blood sample and analyze it they look for if you have a cancer they will the cancer will be secreting lot of diff different proteins and something called as exosomes rnas and uh, other dna molecules which are thrown out of the cancer cell so this technology can detect if there is a cancer and it can if the cancer can be detected very early on okay so this is coming up liquid biopsy <clears throat> next uh, uh, that was for detection tumor detection now some examples of uh, treatment like there is conventional radiotherapy or radiation therapy so you'll have to lie down uh, on a uh, radiation machine where it gives out a uh, strong radiation to kill the cancer so so the radiation would penetrate your cells and uh, kill the cancer cells but the side effect is it is also it also damages your normal cells right so nowadays you have something called as cyber knife technology which is present i think in kerala uh this is known to be very very accurate and it can target 1 mm accuracy of the tumor so the machine continuously looks at the tumor and 
targets the uh, I mean radio emissions directly to the tumor within which is very highly accurate. So the next step is which is very very expensive and very recent is genomics. So you can give your blood sample and get your uh, genome sequenced to find out if you have mutations in some of the genes and which uh, genes are which what kind of cancer can you get and based on your mutations in your gene even your medicines can be uh, tailor made so what they do is if they if you already have a tumor they take the tumor do the biopsy and they do the sequencing of the genome of the cancer cell and they take the tumor and do a, a patient derived xenografts so they take your tumor and grow it on a mouse and treat the mouse with different uh, chemotherapeutics or drugs and they decide which drug is best for you of course the mouse will lose its life but this is done to this is called personalized medicine so this is how they come up with the best strategy to use for which drug you would respond best to okay but even after all this you have heard of oh cancer matte vapas bantu or uh, relapse this is called relapse so this patient this is how a patient undergoes chemotherapy so once there is surgically removed the patients have to undergo chemotherapy so the chemotherapeutic drug like some of the examples are doxorubicin cyclophosphamide paclitaxel so many of the drugs are there so that will be injected into your veins so you'll have to sit there for like 2 hours so there will be different cycles so you have to go sit there and take the drug so what happens is chemotherapy doesn't differentiate a normal cell and a cancer cell it will kill cancer cell of course but also normal cells so that is why you have a lot of side effects you lose your hair you have vomiting you have fever you have lost all your muscles so the the side effects are severe so but even then chemotherapy is not 100% sure because cancer is very very tricky so chemotherapy kills kills most of the cancer cells but some cancer cells which are cancer stem cells they can survive this chemotherapy so they accumulate mutations so as to push out the drug they will not take the drug, drug inside their cytoplasm so this is how they evade the chemotherapeutic drug and once the drug is taken off you think oh your cancer is gone but after a few months these cancer stem cell will again start growing so once once again they will come again very very fast very rapidly and very aggressively and this time even if you give the same drug which was given earlier you will not just not respond so this is called uh, uh, drug resistance to chemotherapy so that is why uh, oncologists now give combination drugs so one cycle they do doxorubicin the other cycle they do cyclophosphamide something like this so they give a mixture of three drugs or three cycles along with different combination of drugs so that to kill all these uh, persisting resistant cells but even then it is not 100% full proof so coming to research in cancer biology these are some of the cells we cells we grow in the lab so if you go to a typical uh, cell culture lab of who perform cancer biology uh, you can see such cells under the microscope so this is this is a picture of cervical cancer it is called hela cells hela is for henrietta lacks it's it's the name of the person she was a 55 year old female she was a nun in a church and she had cervical cancer she died by cervical cancer but even now we use the same cells her own same cancer cells for all her research work so hela cells are taken from a person called henrietta lacks okay and uh, this is a, a example of 
a bevo which is a placental cancer uh, cancer of placenta this is ht29 it is a cancer of it is a colorectal cancer cell line and uh, this is human umbilical vein endothelial cells these are normal cells which are present in when the baby is born the umbilical cord is cut off right so if you go to kr hospital you can see buckets and buckets of uh, umbilical cords which are being thrown every day there are so many deliveries happening so inside the umbilical cord there are three blood vessels right one is a big vein and there are two arteries so you can flush out these endothelial cells from the blood vessels and you can grow them in the lab okay these are normal cells these are not cancerous cells so they just divide 30 times and later die but these will continuously grow okay and this is brain cancer glioblastoma you can see it all they just look like neurons okay and this is a549 which is lung cancer and uh, this cell line mdmb231 mda is md anderson metastatic metastatic breast 231 okay this is an example of a very very difficult to treat triple negative breast cancer it is called triple negative because it doesn't express any of the receptors on its cell surface so it is very very difficult to treat these kind of cancers highly metastatic so you can see the structure they are all hrithik roshans okay they can move around anywhere very quickly so yeah and this is another breast cancer called mcf7 you can look at the morphology here compared to this this is something similar to epithelial morphology they grow in groups they have a definite morphology but still they are cancerous okay and we observe all these cells under a microscope called inverted microscope you might have seen a seen a compound microscope where the objective lens is here but in an inverted microscope they are below so you you grow cells on in these kind of flasks place the flask here and you can observe it here okay you will you can if you get a chance go to gangotri or uh, gangotri biotechnology department or uh, genetics you can see these cells okay so we grow these cells in the co2 incubator inside the lab so the newer technologies for cancer coming up are one is of course immunotherapy immunotherapy is completely based on monoclonal antibodies so these uh, the companies develop these antibodies examples are herceptin pertuzumab bevacizumab rituximab there are many different drugs all their names end with mab mab stands for monoclonal antibody okay so it can do many different kinds of things so one is immunotherapy and now very latest is car t cell technology where your own immune cells so they just take your blood purify your t cells and infect the t cell with the virus which is genetically modified so that it can find a cancer cell okay so the viral genome is itself is modified and the t cells is infected with this virus and this virus uh, uh, gets incorporated into the genome of the t cell and starts expressing this uh, receptor on its surface which can find the uh, diseased uh, cancerous cell find and kill the cancer cell so so your own immune system can find and destroy cancers okay this is one up up upcoming uh, um, technology which will be big in the future and apart from that you have of course all of you know about gene therapy where uh, you can use viral vectors so if the cancer is mutant for p53 or braca1 or braca2 you can introduce the correct unmutated form of this gene using viruses and uh, correct the uh, deficiency and kill the cancer of course this is easy to say but in practicality it is very difficult and very expensive 
so yeah that is one thing and the latest after corona is since we all uh, of course in israel and america we all got the pfizer vaccine which is a mrna vaccine right so based on the same technology uh, scientists are trying to develop mrna vaccines for cancer now so they will be coming up shortly they will be undergoing clinical trials and maybe there will be a mrna vaccine for cancer also so the last slide uh, what are the myths 10 myths about cancer and 10 rules to prevent cancer so what are the i start with the myth so people say if you get a biopsy like i told you they puncture your uh, lungs and take a small portion of the cancer so people think if you do this you will be spreading the cancer to other sites so this is not true so this is a misconception this will not happen so getting a biopsy will not spread your cancer <clears throat> and nowadays you see a lot of uh, youtube videos which say eating less sugar will cure cancer or right so we have all seen this so this is not true Why cancer is not so simple to treat if you just stop eating sugar of course eating sugar is a cause of increasing cancer <clears throat> but if you stop eating sugar it will not go away and uh, and people say if it is a solid tumor growing somewhere you don't need a surgery it will it is harmless so again this is a misconception uh, the 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 benign tumor can convert into a metastatic tumor in the long uh, long course of time and you might die instantly and uh, the europeans or the white skin people think uh, skin cancer is color blind <clears throat> so uh, so skin cancer nobody is uh, of course uh, people with uh, darker skin are slightly safer under the sun compared to the whites because the white white people don't have melanin to protect their dna so it is not that if you are more dark you will you are you will not get skin cancer it is not like that but yeah this is another misconception and uh, other one is chemotherapy always has bad side effects of course chemotherapy has a lot of side effects but nowadays you have better chemotherapeutic drugs with lesser side effects <clears throat> and uh, and um, the another one is if you notice a lump in your breast of course uh, women after certain age should get their uh, breast exam by themselves or from a doctor uh, uh, regularly and uh, if there is if you find a lump in your breast it is not always cancer so there is no uh, uh, there are other conditions because of infections and uh, other things your lymph nodes might be swollen so it is not always if you find a lump it is not always cancer so it is always better to go and check get it checked so of course yeah in india women find it uneasy and they feel shy to go and get some get themselves checked so this should not be the case so once you once you are having doubts you should definitely go to the doctor and get get yourself a mammogram done so it is just like a, a x ray where you stand in front of a, a film x ray film and you are exposed by the x ray to look for uh, cancerous growth okay chemotherapy the next one is chemotherapy is painful uh, chemotherapy is not painful it is it makes you very stressful and uh, weak because after the chemotherapy even your normal cells are affected and uh, and people say pregnant women cannot get cancer treatment so this is not the case even pregnant women can get cancer treatment saving the baby so there are now drugs which can treat women who are pregnant also 
and uh, chemotherapy of course it uh, makes you lose all the hair but your hair will eventually grow back after you have completed the chemotherapy and uh, the last one is they say cancer will always can come back so there are chances of relapse of cancer if your chemotherapy didn't work well so it is better if you detect the cancer early and get your chemotherapy done and finish off all the cycles and then make sure that will make sure you will not get the relapse so how do you prevent cancer <clears throat> of course i don't have to tell you this you have to avoid all kinds of tobacco it might be smoking it might be pan or any other uh, non smoking form of tobacco so tobacco chewing is also uh, it causes oral cancer because chewing releases uh, the chemicals in the tobacco leaf which are which forms adducts which uh, bind to the dna and stop it from translating uh, trans uh, transcribing okay so it forms dna adducts and that is how uh, the cells in your buccal cavity start getting cancer and um, like i said you have to eat a healthy balanced diet stop eating junk food burgers kfc chicken and all that coca cola uh, everything is refined nowadays even the rice we eat the sorry even the rice we eat is polished to such an extent that you want sanna ki kodi and uh, shiny rice and all that right so it is always better to eat unpolished rice with lots of vegetables with lots of uh, fiber in them so going back to the old days is the better way because uh, if you don't eat uh, uh, nutrition without uh, fiber in them you have almost 20 genes which are meant to digest the fiber to keep you healthy since we are eating a lot of junk food nowadays all those 18 genes are going useless okay so you have to make them work all together so that you have a healthy life and of course you have to exercise regularly and you have to be uh, slim you have to be lean and fit and uh, of course obesity increases the risk of everything cardiovascular diseases stroke and cancer also and uh, of course alcohol increases the risk of uh, mouse throat cancer esophageal cancer colon cancer and liver cancer like i told you and uh, even though we are indians like i said you should avoid too much of sun so even too much of sun is bad because of the uv radiation from the sun and uh, yeah you should uh, uh, we should uh, avoid exposure to uh, toxic chemicals from the industries or in the environment and even if you are working in a lab if you are working with uh, chemicals please take care of the read the toxic report of the chemicals if they are dangerous if, whether you should wear gloves and handle them so and uh, even benzene in your chemistry lab benzene other uh, chloroform benzene acetone all these uh, solutions if you inhale them they trigger cancer of course not in one or two days you have to be repeatedly uh, exposed to them and uh, yeah and even the uv light inside the hoods in your labs don't get yourself exposed to the uv light or or even ethidium bromide all these things should be taken care of okay and uh, yeah we should avoid viral infections like hepatitis herpes and hpv and the other thing one most important thing is you have to sleep well because if you don't sleep well your circadian rhythm your biological clock is affected so if we humans through evolution even before electricity was found we used to uh, wake up early when the sun was rising and we used to go to sleep when the sun set so this is circadian rhythm 
so nowadays people go to work like in the call centers go to work in the middle of the night sleep and uh, come back home in the morning and sleep all day so if you do this everything will go bad your biological clock your cells will not know how to respond to different chemical signals so this is one important thing and uh, yeah the last one is get enough of vitamin d through sun exposure and supplements so yeah this is it i i think i took a very long time okay it's okay sir but it was really informative yes the topic is open for discussion if you have any doubts please uh, send the message through text box Uh, sir, I have one, one doubt, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, sir, from the biopsy, we can easily, easily identify the stage of the tumor like cancer. But for the leukemia, blood cancer, how can we identify the stage? Mm -hmm. And some doctors said uh, leukemia not have the stage. It's correct or wrong? Uh, I'm not well versed in leukemic cancer, but... yeah i think they don't have the staging uh yeah, it is only based on their cell surface markers so these uh, leukemia cells would be continuously mutating like i told you so they will be expressing a lot of cell surface receptors so based on the number of uh, oncogenic receptors they find on the uh, cancer cells they might tell you the grading of the leukemia and this is this is all i know okay thank you sir thank you so there is a question yes, sir. Yes, sir. why do some people with the breast cancer gain weight do they gain weight before getting breast cancer or after after surgery sir after surgery okay yeah maybe it is because of the adipose tissues uh after surgery i don't know where is i i think it is because of the high dose of chemotherapeutics and uh, there is water accumulation there is edema lot of edema uh, i'm not aware of this and they say after uh, uh, treatment as well sir the weight gain the weight gain, yeah. weight gain. Weight gain. they will gain the weight after the treatment as well they are saying is there, is there any particular reason to gain the weight after the treatment or after the surgery of uh, when they are taking the treatment against cancer uh, i mean uh, i'm not sure about this the gain weight and all maybe because your cells after the chemotherapy are all recovered and they are uh, you are you are feeling better and you probably eat a lot i don't know i have no idea this audience is anything else uh, sir may i yes you can yes you can yes yes uh, Uh, sir uh, can i know some of the basic symptoms like if you could mention few like what are the bodily changes which happens and uh, a woman needs to know about it at the moment like uh, this this symptom needs to have a medical emergency like uh, not in deep in mm -hmm. uh, in a deeper version but uh, uh, the basic symptoms like uh, every woman should know about it something like that you are you are asking me in, in with respect to any particular type of cancer 
uh, something related to women like any uh, i mean of course all cancers are uh, to women as well but a woman mm -hmm. in, in specific if she has to have any certain uh, concerns about it uh, okay so if if i talk about menopausal women and uh, of course uh, we should all ask our mothers we should be open about this we should talk uh, very openly about this so uh, what happens usually after 50 55 uh, aged women is uh, they have this menopause they have menstrual bleeding of uh, which is not of 28 days of correct timing they just might not know and immediately have a uh, uh, menstruation like symptoms for a few days and uh, it might be repeating unoccasionally like not in a correct manner and uh, there is something called a spotting which happens repeatedly even though uh, you don't see other signs of uh, uh, the typical signs of menstruation so this is one sign even even after 55 if you see spotting if you still see bleeding you have to go to go and get yourself checked and uh, yeah and you are you having hot flushes like you are feeling hot and dizzy all the time you are uh, you are you are getting pimples you these are usually signs of menopause but you should take care uh, your endometrium is not getting thicker and thicker so in, you should get a ct scan done and if the endometrium is crossing 15 mm in thickness it is a red flag so you have to get a biopsy done and uh, yeah other things like uh, fibroids and cysts ovarian cysts and the one of the most uh, toughest and difficult most uh, toughest cancer or the worst kind of cancer is ovarian cancer wherein if you if the ovaries get cancerous uh, they start secreting a lot of fluid inside the body and your whole abdomen will be filled with uh, something uh, a fluid secreted by these cancerous cells so this is called ascites so which has to be drained out making a hole inside your abdomen so yeah this might be one of the cause after uh, like somebody asked why there is a weight gain this might be one of the reasons also and uh, other than that uh, if uh, if if you if you have certain infections or uh, viral infections uh, after a certain age if you are sexually active uh, it is you, you you should make sure uh, you should get a pap smear i hope all the girls would have heard of a pap smear test so uh, they just uh, take a smear from the cervix cervix of the patient and observe it under the microscope or do some tests on it so this is how you should get a pap smear done and check for uh, hepato uh, sorry human papilloma virus infections and look for cervical cancer symptoms and of course breast cancer uh, you should uh, uh, do regular tests by yourselves by uh, feeling for lumps in the breast and under the armpit where the nearest uh, lymph nodule is present so if there is a cancer uh, starting the lymph node will be swollen under the armpit uh, either your left or the right so this is one of the initial signs so if the arm, uh, lymph node uh, just like you feel in the tonsils the same kind of lymph node under your armpit if there is a uh, breast cancer initiating in one of the breast the that side of the lymph node would be swollen so this might be a, a I, I won't say it will be cancer but if there is another infection or something even then the lymph node might be swollen but uh, yeah these are all the signs you should look for
to stay clear so what i would suggest is maintain a healthy weight eat good diet and exercise is very important and cut down on the sugar yeah thank you sir thanks for that that was very useful yes ka we along with that the uh, basic symptoms are uh, appetite loss weight loss and uh, unusual bathroom habits so with that yeah. you can yeah thanks sir and that was very useful like us girls of this age needs to know certain uh, basic symptoms so it will be helpful before reaching out to a doctor we can examine ourselves right thank you sir thanks on that thanks to any queries dear participants if there is no queries we can conclude the session thank you sir for sharing your knowledge with us it was a great session we got an opportunity to learn from you the basics history uh, characteristics and the general aspects regarding the cancer and also uh, we got an opportunity to learn the uh, technology in cancer diagnosis and treatment as well uh, it was very informative sir thank you My now pleasure. I, Thank you. Now I request uh, HS Mini N of third BDBM to render the oath of thanks. HS Mini, over to you. Ishwini, can you hear me? Please turn on your mic and speak. Uh, respected principal sir chief guest faculty members and offered colleagues students and all other participants a very good afternoon to one and all i yashaswini r from third bsc btbm mmt mysore and sdm college mysore saying thank you is one of the way to convey our gratitude i'm here to give my oath of thanks firstly i would like to thank our beloved principal saina malike madu Sir, who is encouraging and motivating students in all the aspects. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to thank our chief guest of our session, Dr. Arshuraj Ham, for enlightening all of us about the science behind the cancer. The session was very interesting and informative, sir. This session uh, made all of us to think and learn about it. Thank you, sir. Then I would like to thank Sumitra Ma'am, head of the department. of electronics and iqac coordinator for being a part of this program thank you ma'am now i would like to thank uh, atya samin ma'am head of the department of microbiology vetro ma'am head of the department of biochemistry vijay sir head of the department of biotechnology and also i would like to thank rajeshwari ma'am and pallavi ma'am too thank you all especially i thank vijay sir and shweta ma'am in charge of sex successfully uh, arranging this session thank you all and i would like to thank all the faculties of our college uh, who are part of this session thank you all finally i would like to thank all the students for being patient and making this program successful one thank you thank you all thank you thank you ashishwini i request dr brijesh sir to thank all the participants on behalf of our college good afternoon on behalf of our department first i would like to thank our beloved principal professor sainath malikamadu for his consistent support and encouragement thank you sir and also i thank professor sumitra jiya iqsc coordinator for all time support
then my sincere gratitude towards today's resource person dr harsharaj for accepting our invitation amid his busy schedule and delivering the wonderful lecture with fun and informative images definitely it will remain in our mind for long periods so thank you so much sir now i thank organizing committee members dr shweta prasanna ms apurva ms ashini ms ashwini ayer and i thank mr akshay for technical support then i want to thank all uh, my dear colleagues participants including teaching staff non teaching staff research scholars and students for your cooperation to make this event successful thank you all once again thank you dear participants kindly fill the feedback form to obtain your certificate once again thank you one and all for joining with us have a great day Bye. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you. Streaming. 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 Streaming.